It is now time for member statements. I recognize the member for Windsor West. Thank you, Speaker. My office has received thousands of phone calls, emails, and letters from concerned seniors, parents, and social assistance recipients that are not receiving the eye care they desperately need. Parents are worried that their children cannot participate fully in class because they can't see the board at the front of the classroom. Seniors have been forced to visit or emergency rooms to seek the vision care they desperately need. Eye care is critical health care, and it is important that all Ontarians have access to an optometrist when they need one. I received an email from a concerned father whose 19-year-old daughter has been unable to book an appointment with her optometrist. Her vision has deteriorated so badly she can no longer drive herself to work or to buy groceries. I have also heard from a constituent that requires a yearly eye exam as he is diabetic. He says that his vision is now in jeopardy as he waits to see his doctor and have a, his prescription updated. No one should have to go without health care in this province, and that includes vision care. Optometrists and their patients suffer from decades of chronic cuts to vision care. Optometrists have been forced to cover almost half of the cost of an appointment out of pocket because this government and the previous Liberal government have refused to properly fund OHIP-covered eye care. Last week, Windsor City Council sent a letter to the Minister of Health calling on her and the Conservative government to get back to the table and negotiate a fair agreement with the Association of Optometrists. I echo the call of Windsor City Council and the thousands of individuals in my riding that contacted me about this important issue. It's time for this government to say yes to eye care for all Ontarians and negotiate in good faith with optometrists in order to protect Thank the you. vision of everyone in the province. As a member for Barry in the Thank you, Speaker. November marks the beginning of Holocaust Education Month, which aims to remember the lessons of the Holocaust. This year's theme is Holocaust distortion, myths, and misinformation. Unfortunately, the spread via social media and platforms like uh, TikTok and other social media have distorted uh, what the Holocaust stood for, with misinformation coming not only from social media, but many authoritarian leaders. As uh, the mistakes of the past teach us about things that we do not want to repeat again, it is so important to mark Holocaust Education Week. In the words of Simon Wiesenthal, a Holocaust survivor, he stated the Holocaust is not only a Jewish tragedy, but also a human tragedy. However, there are still examples around the world of such atrocities happening, be it Rwanda or former Yugoslavia, and many more. I'm proud that our government has committed to working with Ontario's Jewish community to establish a Holocaust memorial on the grounds of the Legislative Assembly by 2025, thanks to the motion from the member of Eglinton Lawrence. This memorial will mark the 80th anniversary of the liberation of the Nazi death in concentration camps and the end of World War II. The extermination and genocide of millions of Jewish people stands alone in human history for its horrors and its inhumanity. The memorial will help many generations remember and learn from this dark chapter in human history and to reject all forms of evil, racism, discrimination, and anti-Semitism so that such atrocities will never happen again. All Ontarians have a responsibility to remember the millions of innocent women, men, and children who perished during the Shoah, and to honour and learn from survivors so the future generation will never let such atrocities happen again. Speaker, none is too many. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Parkdale High Park. Speaker, the Ford government announced that in January 2022, Ontario's minimum wage will become $15 an hour. Let me remind this government that one of the first things they did after getting elected was cancel minimum wage increases. Even if the Premier had not touched minimum wage at all, it would have still been higher than $15 an hour. Let me also remind this government that the people of Ontario demanded $15 an hour in 2015, six years ago. $15 minimum wage in 2022 still leaves workers behind, especially considering the impact of the pandemic. The cost of living has skyrocketed. Have you been to the grocery store lately? Food prices are up dramatically. Milk up 8%, meats up 15%, eggs, butter up 12%, and don't even get me started on energy prices. Gas is up, hydro is up, everything, food, housing, insurance prices, everything has gone up dramatically, but wages. Wages have not increased to keep up with these trends. So stop patting yourself for action that is too little too late. You've missed the boat. Quite frankly, I don't even care that very opportunistically this government is doing this 
seven months before an election. But I do care is that you do it right, that workers get the wages they deserve, wages that match the times we're living in. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Eglinton Lawrence. Thank you, Speaker. Approximately 6,000 Ontarians, uh, for them, scleroderma is a rare chronic multi-symptom autoimmune disease that affects the body's connective tissues. And the cause of scleroderma is unknown, and currently there is no cure. Mr. Speaker, there are treatments that can help slow the process down and improve the quality and the quantity of life for persons affected by this disease, but these can be extremely costly and difficult to access. Ontarians living with this rare and debilitating condition face significant physical and emotional challenges, often involving feelings of hopelessness, helplessness, and feeling like they're being a burden to others. But there is hope for scleroderma patients. The Scleroderma Society of Ontario is an organization focused on raising awareness, funds, and support for those with this disease, and they're working towards a cure. Mr. Speaker, I would like to thank the entire team at the Scleroderma Society of Ontario who are with us virtually today. They are terrific leaders in this fight to find a cure for this little-known and debilitating disease. I know that they are speaking with a number of the members of this legislature today and in the coming weeks, and I certainly urge all of my colleagues to take the time to join them and engage in these important discussions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for St. Catherine. Speaker, I am pleased to rise to speak about a great initiative in Niagara, the Valhalla Project Niagara, which has helped over 160 veterans and first responders with PTSD. Last week, the Valhalla finished its 11th cohort. A nonprofit, the heart of the heart of this caring group is the local board members that are veterans and first responders. Sean Bennett, Graham Bates, Wendy Walker, Ken Boudet, Boudet Lyle Renault, Director, Mary Hormardin, um, Annalise Hartwig, Melody Duran, sorry about the pronunciations. These motivated community members started a Learn to Live program that created a way for these veterans, firefighters, and other first responders to get away from life and learn to live with their PTSD. For over two years, through this local program, the members of our community that have sacrificed so much are giving a place to stay and learn that they are not alone. Five days away for no cost to them. This program and its team of volunteers began with training service dogs and has evolved into something so much more. Groups like the Valhalla Bridge Gats that we still have in our support systems for the men and women that fought for our freedom and are still living at that cost. As we come up to Remembrance Day, please join me in celebrating their work, their charity, their heart, and their continued sacrifice at this time. It is important to remember our symbols matter. So actions must be done. I cannot be more proud that this group is being done in Niagara. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Cambridge. Speaker, sometimes political partisan battles are referenced with warlike analogies. We are in a war, some say, when discussing political debates. This government even referred to Vimy Ridge in one characterization of COVID-19, apparently to build some kind of analogy with their measures dealing with COVID-19 in an actual war. We often see the governing party make pledges for campaign donations, calling it their war chest. All these references do is trivialize what it means to really be in a war. So, Speaker, I wish to take this opportunity to remember the courageous Canadians who have fought in real wars and those who continue to fight in real military conflicts. Unfortunately, this Remembrance Day, some of our veterans will be forced to use a vaccine passport to enter a legion, others denied, and they are looking at our province governed under emergency orders for almost two years. They must be wondering if anyone left knows what a real emergency looks like. These courageous Canadians defended in international military conflict are Canadian values, our freedoms, our way of life, the rule of law, 
our system of parliamentary democracy, and the system of government that sees the people pass judgment on government, and those occupying these seats change through peaceful determinations at the ballot box. It is a privilege to live in a country like Canada with one of the best qualities of life in the world, and throughout our history, Canadians have earned enormous respect by answering the call to fight against tyranny and evil in international military. We remember those who selflessly defended our freedoms, those who fought, many making the ultimate sacrifice. We can never repay the debt that we owe to them, but we can remember their courage, their bravery, their patriotism, lest we forget. Member statements. The member for Scarborough, Agent Court. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Parents engaged in education is trendsetting Scarborough-based organization dedicated to help our most needy families and students. Its Education Bank Office is the first one in Canada dedicated to empower our students to excel and build a better future. The organization's mission is to help students with the skills and knowledge to build a successful future. The Education Bank program provides more than 1,000 kids, including Scarborough Aging Court students, with the school supplies, books, computers, fun activities, lunch bags, amenities for self-care and mental health resources. They also play an important role in conflict resolution, parent engagement, and the school learning plans. The volunteer parents and educators have a critical role in or the organization's mission. It was great pleasure to join the Minister of Education on a visit to parents engaged in education office and observe firsthand their amazing work. Furthermore, I was honored to donate some school supplies to their back-to-school backpack program. In addition, I had the great pleasure of joining the team at the Toronto Zoo to distribute 1,000 backpacks. I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to Teresa Pastore, the executive director, the board members, and the volunteers for their commitment and sacrifices. Thank you. Thank you very much, Member Statements. The member for Brampton North. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's an honour to rise today on behalf of the Hindu community of Brampton North. As we all know, the month of November is Hindu Heritage Month, a time for us to recognize the important contributions that Hindu Canadians have made to society across all fields, including but not limited to science, education, medicine, law, politics, media, business, culture, sports, and philanthropy. It's a time for all of us to come together and celebrate our vibrant Hindu community and the Hindu way of life. I want to thank the Hindu Heritage Celebration Foundation for inviting me to their flag raising ceremony in Brampton. We will be raising the heritage flag to mark the occasion. Last month, I had the honor of attending some local temples like the Sri Radha Madhav Heritage and Culture Center for their Dussehra celebration. I had a great time connecting with my constituents and celebrating the festivities. The Hindu community around the globe celebrates Dussehra and the triumph of good over evil. Dussehra marks the culmination of Navrati and the beginning of Diwali. Diwali is one of the most important periods in November for Hindus across the world. This festival symbolizes the victory of light over darkness. Diwali will be celebrated tomorrow on November 4th. Mr. Speaker, Brampton North is home to thousands of Hindus, and I want to wish them and everyone here a happy Hindu Heritage Month and a happy Diwali. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Sarnia Lambton. Mr. Speaker. Well, good morning, Mr. Speaker, and it's an honour and a privilege to rise in the House today and recognize the 100th anniversary of the Sarnia Cenotaph in my riding of Sarnia Lambton. Originally dedicated on November 7, 1921, a rededication ceremony was held recently to mark the important memorial centennial anniversary. This Sarnia Cenotaph exists to pay tribute to the valiant efforts of those who gave their service and their lives to protect the freedoms that we enjoy in Sarnia Lambton and indeed across Canada. The Cenotaph honors and commemorates the Valerie, valor and sacrifice of our veterans along with the active members of the Canadian Armed Forces and their families, including those who served in our most recent wars like Afghanistan and, and Korea. 
We remember their sacrifice, we grieve with the loved ones of the fallen, and we thank them for their service to our province and to our country. On behalf of the Government of Ontario, I offer my greatest respect for those who bravely answered the call to serve our country in the name of peace and freedom. Our government is proud that this memorial continues to stand today as a lasting legacy, giving all Lamptonians and Ontarians a pace to show our gratitude to the heroes of yesterday and today. Our veterans, our fallen soldiers, and their families deserve our recognition and our profound respect, appreciation, and pride. We all owe a debt of gratitude to their unwavering dedication to preserving our freedoms. From myself and the province of Ontario, we thank you sincerely. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. That concludes our member's statements for this morning.